What's going on Thrawn Squad and welcome back. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to tune your carburetor, how to change your jets, how to adjust the idle air screw, and how to adjust your fuel screw. So all of this has been a learning curve for me and I'm going to share all my knowledge with you guys because I have bought one of the hardest carburetors in the world to tune, which is the Nibby right here. And if you guys own one of these, you guys understand that they are very finicky. If you just have the idle air screw, just one eighth of a turn in the wrong direction, this bike will run like garbage. So I'm gonna teach you guys everything that I learned and I'm gonna give all my knowledge to you guys. So bear with me, let's get started. All right, real quick, before we jump right into this video, I just wanna show you guys the super cool hat that I had made. And if you guys haven't seen our expensive versus cheap, real versus fake carburetor video, go check that out. We have the Nibby tuned to the max, but we don't actually have the Makuni tuned to the max. So I'm going to be rejetting the Makuni and trying to see if we can get more performance out of it. So you guys are going to want to stay tuned to see that because then I'll do a comparison between the two after both of them are jetted properly. So let's watch this video right here and find out how we actually tune a carburetor. All right, let's get to it. All right, guys. So there is two main style carburetors. One where you'll have an idle air screw here and an idle fuel screw here and another style where you'll have your idle air screw on the bottom and your fuel screw, screw right here on the side. So for educational purposes, I'm gonna take this carburetor apart to show you guys how, how it works and where the three main jets are. So first of all, you're gonna to wanna to take the bowl off, set it off to the side. I un already unscrewed this. So you have your two bottom jets. This one will be your pilot jet, which controls your, your fuel flow from idle to quarter turn. Then you have your main jet, which will control the fuel from a quarter turn to full throttle. And then you have your float, which as you can see on this one, it is perfectly parallel, which is where you want it to be. But if you have your float bowl that's sitting like this or sitting like this, and you guys want to adjust it, all you have to do is take this little pin right here and push it down or up to just adjust it. So when, cause this is upside down. So when it's like this and upside down, your bowl is down and that pin is down right there, which the, the fuel flows through that little pin into, into the bowl. And as the floats lift up, it'll stop the fuel from coming in. So you do want this to be parallel. You have too much fuel in here, it'll flood it and it'll just run gas in through your main jet and your bike won't run good. And if you have it too low, there won't be enough fuel for your jets to pick up. So you could be having issues where you think it's jetting when it actually could be your flow. But all you wanna do is unscrew both of these to change them out. So this one, idle to quarter turn. This one, mid range to high. So if you are having an issue down low with your throttle and it idling, and when you give it just a little bit of gas and you're having an issue with sputtering or bogging, um, you could have too big or too small of a pilot jet. And when you're on full throttle, if you're having the same problem where it's bogging down or it's starving and doing fuel cutting, you may have too big or too small of a main jet. Now there is also the third jet, which I'm just gonna unscrew the top of this there will be a spring in here that comes out. Sorry guys, I'm doing this one-handed. And you're gonna wanna pull your slide out. Now, I already took the clip off of the top of this just to make this video a lot easier for everyone. So you also have a third jet. And this jet right here is called your needle jet. And as you can see, it has little rivets on it and it has a pin on there that holds it in place. So this little clip right here, um, when you adjust this down, what it actually does is it lifts this jet up higher and this jet sits right here on top of your main jet. So when it's down inside your carburetor, it is sitting on top of this main jet right here. So when you have it all the way down here, it's actually lifting it up and keep, keeping it raised on there. So at, while this is raised, more fuel can flow through it. And then when you're full throttling it, lifting it up, it gives it all wide open. But a lot of reasons why I had adjusted this in my last video, if no one understood why, the reason why I was adjusting it lower was because I was having a hard problem that idled, not a, the fuel. 
So the reason why I was adjusting this lower was to lift it up so that the main jet would be on earlier. So it would basically be as soon as I was giving it throttle, this would come up sooner to let more fuel into, into the engine. So we are gonna get started today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn all these screws in and I'm gonna show you guys how to base tune your carburetor if you already have the proper jetting in here. So I'm gonna start that and then I'm gonna get into talking about how you adjust the jetting for what you need and what purposes. All right. Now, if anyone owns a Navy carburetor, then what I'm about to do might make you cringe. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take this air fuel screw and I'm just gonna turn it all the way in. All right, there we are, all the way in. And I'm gonna take this fuel screw and I'm gonna turn it all the way in. All right, now that they're all the way in, let me see, this one's not actually all the way in. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna give you a basic rundown of where you want to adjust both of these screws to have a, a starting base to tune your bike. Now, your first one will be right here. What I like to do, I like to turn it out one full turn. So half a turn, full turn. Now, you want this to be between realistically one and one and a half I don't really care what anyone else says online. If you want your bike to run at the most optimum level, that's ideally what you want to shoot for. Now for this fuel screw, you want it to be out about two turns to three turns, ideally. And the closer you can get, because you want it to be between one and three turns all the way out, but ideally you want it to be like a perfect two or really close to two. This is going to help you find your, your main jetting. So let's turn this let's turn this all the way out so I'm gonna do this right here I'm gonna turn it keep my finger on it that way I know where it is that's one turn right there and then one and a half two turns so now I have a base spot where I can tune it from so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna start this bike up and we are going to go from there as far as tuning. All right. So let's see if this bike will start right now with the base settings that I set it at. Let's turn that choke on. people say you have to warm it up to get it dialed in but what you really want to do is you want to get it towards running as smooth as possible with the idle air fuel screw and then you want to adjust the fuel screw so idle air screw you want to adjust to where it has you know a good sounding tune good sounding run to it then you want to adjust the fuel screw after that so once you get it dialed in perfect you can adjust it now let's say you get it where it sounds like it's running perfectly smooth right here on your idle air and you tune this to where it sounds like it's idling good and then you twist the throttle and you hear a bog or yeah uh, you twist the throttle and it sounds like it's falling on its face you either need to up or lower your pilot jet 
if it's right off the throttle and then you want to take it for a ride and then after that if you were riding on the higher rpm range once you're riding and you feel at the top end you feel like it's cutting out like it's uh uh uh, uh you are probably running too lean which means that you need to up to a bigger main jet so that way when you're riding it it'll go through that whole entire range it's better to run a little bit lean than it a better uh, sorry it's better to run a little bit rich than to run too lean so you're going to want to change up your jets and check your spark plug the hard part i had with tuning this specific carburetor is that my spark plug on here has about 100 runtime hours so i i, I already need to change it but I, I know that the spark plug looks like it's in good condition so you have to check to see if it's black or a little dirty then you're probably running a little too rich and if it's clear and white you're running a little too lean what you kind of want to do is you kind of want to get right there in the middle and you want to have a golden brown color that's a good indication that your bike is running good so if you're having problems when you just turn the throttle just a little bit then you need to adjust your pilot jet and if you're having problems when you're in the higher rpms you need to adjust your main but the needle jet can change a lot of things so let's say you're you're somewhere where you're you changed elevation but you know your jetting is good for your bike and you change elevations and right when you're getting on the throttle a little bit normally where it picks up right off the bat and it's not this time what you can do is you can take your needle jet and you can adjust your pin down one so that way it opens up to let more fuel go in and that should help with hesitation the, the needle jet is just simply for minor adjustments when you switch in just a little bit of elevation um, i mean you could change your main and your pilots but if you're going let's say where i live 3,000 feet where we go riding is about 4,500 feet and if i notice a difference there then i can adjust my needle up and down um, for by elevation but let's say you're going from let's say you're going from sea level and you're you're riding at about 5,000 feet elevation well your jetting is going to be completely different and completely off because the atmosphere is a little bit thinner up at 5,000 square feet so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to accommodate your jets for elevation so uh, if there's more air going in you're going to want more rich and if it's less air the atmosphere is thinner you're going to want to be a little bit more on the leaner side so let's say if you're coming from sea level going up to 5,000 feet elevation you may want to go down a jet size so you may want to if you have um in here right now i have a 120 main and a 48 pilot jet which a lot of people on a lot of the forums and everything i read said it was the complete opposite and they couldn't get small enough jets well the problem was is with this bike i feel like i couldn't get big enough jets uh, i did put a 125 in and I noticed that top end, it sounded like it was fuel cutting, but what it was actually doing is it was actually getting too much fuel that it was blowing out the spark. So sometimes having too much fuel is a bad thing because then your spark won't actually be able to spark and all the fuel is not being able to be unburned. But another thing you can do for tuning on these things is use your, use your sense of smell. If at idle you smell a lot of gas, then what's gonna happen is is you're probably running too much too much fuel through there and so your pilot jet may be too big uh another problem you have um if you're if you're running too lean you're going to get that same hesitation when you twist the throttle the problem the hardest problem that most people have with their jetting is the same exact two things will happen but if you're running too rich and let's say you give it the throttle and you let off the throttle and you're too rich what can happen is let's say you're if this is this is a quick indicator that you're too rich that you rev it up and it takes a long time for the bike to come back down on the rpms that means you're running too rich um lean you'll get a quick you'll get a rev it'll bog and that's an indicator that you're running too lean but you can also get the same thing if you're running too rich so 
a lot of the jetting tips is going to be playing around with jets. Um, you can go on Amazon. I know I bought my jet kit for seven bucks for the mains, and that came from sizes 85 all the way to 130. Oh no, 140 all the way to 140. So I had I got 20 jets with that kit for the main jets. The pilot jets I bought individually at a local shop because the local shop told me they can't sell main jets here in California. So I had to order those online. But now that I have this bike dialed in, I can snap rev the throttle and this bike will start with it tuned the way it is. Now it'll start first kick with no choke typically, um, unless it's a really cold day. Like today is about 80 degrees out. So it's actually nice temperature. So it's easy to start. But sometimes if you have a hard time starting after you change your jets, and you have it turned out one click here, and this one's out too, like I suggested setting it in the first place originally, um, you could you could change out your pilot jet to see what gets you to start. Um, sometimes you can have too big of a pilot jet in there, it won't let it start. You could have too small of a pilot jet in there, it won't start. All right guys, so I wanted to make this video, I'm not an expert, but after dealing with this issue, I feel like I could pretty much dial in any bike that I come across. I took this to the shop and I feel like with this specific carburetor it is just machined so well that it's actually kind of hard to tune because I mean it just this is my opinion and what I what I think that's going on with this specific carburetor is I think that everything is machined so smoothly that the air isn't getting disrupted as it's going into the motor so it's not actually mixing all the fuel as well like sometimes when there's like in here you want it to be a little bit coarse and not completely polished out because what's actually happening is the air is like being thrown in different directions which is actually mixing the fuel with the air and mixing the vapors so that you actually get a better combustion inside the engine chamber but um like i said i'm just a regular guy and i just wanted to share my knowledge with you and my struggles that i've had with tuning carburetors and it's really the biggest performance mod you guys can do to any dirt bike that has a carburetor or ATV or UTV. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, leave them down in the comment section below. And uh, make sure you guys subscribe, like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel and you guys haven't already entered into our GoPro Hero 7 giveaway, we're giving away once we hit 1,000 subscribers. And if you guys are watching after 1,000 subscribers, don't worry, we're going to give something else away. All you have to do to enter in a win is take a screenshot, you're subscribed. Send it to us on Instagram at Thoreau underscore family. You guys will automatically enter it into win. So, um, I hope you guys like this video, and I hope you guys found it informative. And we'll see you next time. Peace.